Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Since sodium metaborate is so hard to get hold of in UK, in fact, unfortunately, still photographic, uh, who used to sell it in UK is now no longer selling it, I thought I'd show you today how to make your own. It's a very important chemical in the darkroom. Let's go and have a look. Making sodium metaborate is not a difficult thing. You'll need warm water, not hot, just warm. You need borax, which I buy on eBay in bulk. And you'll need sodium hydroxide or drain cleaner, which is very easy to get hold of. Now, in the right proportions, these two mixed together make sodium metaborate. Now I've got my scales ready and I've got a bottle ready to put the sodium metaborate in. And not only have I labeled it sodium metaborate, but I've also put in how much of the mixture in here will make one gram of sodium metaborate. We'll come on to that in a moment. So I've just got over 300 mils of warm water here and I'm going to first add the borox. And what I need is seven grams of borox. Now borox doesn't dissolve very well in water, which is why we need quite a bit of water for it to work. So let's first measure our seven grams out. Nearly there, it's quite heavy, this stuff. So there we are. Make sure you do this in a well ventilated room or outside. There we are. And you can see I'm wearing gloves as well, especially because of the sodium hydroxide. So there's seven grams of borox. And I'm going to put this in the warm water and dissolve that. Got my little stirry stick here. Get that in. And if you're making your own chemistry in the dark room, do buy yourself some decent mixers like this with the flat end. They make such a difference because you can pulverize the crystals as you're stirring and it breaks them up and just helps them to dissolve easily. I can also hear if there's any crystals left on the bottom because of this grinding noise, but that's it just about in solution. There we go, lovely. Lovely, there we are, all dissolved. So dissolve that one first. Now the next thing we need to add then is the sodium hydroxide. Now a lot of people are cautious of sodium hydroxide and that is a good thing to be. This is caustic, if it gets on your skin, it will burn. If it gets onto furniture, it will burn the furniture. It just dissolves all sorts of things, including grime in your drains. And that's why we use it for cleaning out drains. But it is safe if you treat it with respect. Now, when you add sodium hydroxide to water, it heats up the water. I'm only going to add one and a half grams of this sodium hydroxide. So this warm water is not going to boil. It's absolutely safe. But if I had water that was at near boiling point, and why I would do that, I do not know. But if I did, this could make the water boil. So be careful. And if you're mixing a lot of this into water, it can also boil the water. So take care. However, with this, I'm just going to use one and a half grams of the sodium hydroxide. And there's something else I should tell you about sodium hydroxide. It's hygroscopic. And what hygroscopic, I should say. And what that means is that it absorbs moisture from the air very readily and becomes all clammy and starts to get wet. So when you use it, keep it in a dry bottle like this and use it quite quickly. So I'm gonna measure it out quite quickly and you'll see and when I pour it into this water, it'll already be sticking to this piece of paper because it's already absorbed moisture from the air. So my scales are ready and I'm going to weigh out one and a half grams, which is not a lot. There's 1.4, a little bit more. There, 1.5. I'm being very careful with this in case there's any grains of this sodium hydroxide on it. 
because I don't want it to get onto this furniture and start to mess it up. So now we're going to gently pour this into the warm water and you'll see, can you see that? It's sticking to the paper. So I gently just wipe it down like this very carefully, very mindfully, like so. Very good. And it's sticking to the paper because it's already absorbing moisture from the air. Lovely. So that's now into the solution. And look, it's absolutely safe. It doesn't do anything crazy to the water when there's so little. And now I'm just dissolving that in with that borax. So to recap, seven grams of borax into warm water dissolve. 1.5 grams of sodium hydroxide into the water and dissolve. And now we have sodium metaborate. Now all I need to do now is just top this up to 400 milliliters. Let me go and get some cool water to do that with. And here it is. Let's just pour that in there up to 400. Give it a final stir. So it's up to 400 milliliters. I'm going to put it in my bottle straight away. We don't want any accidents. There we are. I'm going to put the top on loosely because as this air cools down inside the bottle, it's going to start to suck the bottle in. So leave your cap loose if it's warm water in there. And because of the way, the ratio we mixed it with the water, 40 milliliters of this solution will make one gram of sodium metaborate in my chemistry. We use this in Barry Thornton 2 bath. We use it in fixers like TF2 and TF3. Uh, DK76B uses it. PMK uses sodium metaborate. It's a very useful chemical to have in your darkroom. I hope that you've learned how to make it at home now. Thanks for watching. If you like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys. Ah, oh, before I go, thank you to my patrons. I'll see you guys next week.